If all, if all was written, that should be. If all was said, that should be said. Then you, you would know your real name when you were once a morning star. Christmas love. Curious evasions abuse the story of the wise ones and the star they followed in their search for the incredible. Oh, come, this now edition of breath, expand my thinking space. Let me not linger in the assumings that are only scribble on the walls of life. I admit I am in search for the famous dot, the famous period that codes the conclusion of fulfillment. I jaunt over the mimics, and instead I search out the melodies that prophesied of a coming cradle of light. Ah, so bright is that cradle of light, my eyes can only turn upward. I am bestowed with a clasp of emotion that pulses deep beats from my heart. This thing I feel, this love rooted, is not just earth bound, but reaches to the Christmas star afar. Tell me no tales of chalk. Better, sing to me songs of warm truth. Today I will cry some, rejoice some. Tomorrow I will be saved by the cradle's grace. Then I secretly by vision entered a cathedral of atoms where its magistrates were angels of love, and they were conversing about the mother of the to-be cradle's incredible occupant. So it was Mary, a pure and pleasant harp player and singer, was chosen to give birth to the Christ by the Holy Spirit. She was chosen because the crown of halo most perfectly fit her head better than any other soul. The wise one once followed the points of starlight. Christmas love was almost come. Almost come, I say. Almost come. The trackways of the wise ones on the desert sands were filtered away time and again by the blowing, waving winds. But the wise ones kept tracking and following the golden star. Star, did I say? Oh, star, yes, and much, much more. The half has not been told. Zith, ziths in the sky, hover low. Sweet affection in the form of love is born. Now has come Christmas love, and never shone love brighter. Awkward words stumbling on tongues cannot speak for the stunningness of it all. The hoary fertilizer of despoiled hopes lies miserably, grasping in the rust of all other failed salvation attempts. But now, the real salvation of Christmas love has come. Therefore, let bells from the highest steeples ring. Heart of mine, open your doors. Hear also, ye hearts, all over the world. Let destiny kiss the sweetest of love into your hearts. For now the transom tree is planted in the center of your home with lights and colors of resurrection festivity. Here is love that loves so greatly death could not find keeper comfort. Here is love that cares if you hurt, that cares if the souls of the world hurt. Here is love whose hands earth's life journey could not hold back from reaching out to heal with love the sickness of the multitudes. O oh, shadowless bountiful treasure of love, your charms of cheer glorify even the footpaths where you walk. The everywhere of withered hope, so full of a forbidding bewilderment, lies motionless in your presence. Melancholy dies when you speak. Death becomes not death when life and love are risen. O oh, perfect moments of Christmas love, stretch into an eternity and live in my heart forevermore. When your time comes, go out to the battlefields of the world and wave your hand and command the world to beat their swords into plowshares. Christmas love, I will remember your face forever. I saw you on the day a time ago when I was in the hospital very sick. You came to my bedside and my just seeing the love and compassion on your face 
peace healed me. And now I walk and talk in my mind of the wise ones and the star of wonder of that Christmas love day. Christmas love, oh Christmas love, I love you. Yes, Jesus Christ, Yaviel, my Father God of heaven, I love you, I love you. I was in a faraway place that I had never been there before. I was searching, looking, yearning, thinking. And then, as I was walking along the street, I could hear children, and I could hear like a choir. And I could hear them singing. On the streets, people are singing. Silent night, holy night, and church bells are ringing over the way. By the fireside, the book is open, and people are reading of a manger oh so far so far away what time is that can make the heart so happy that can make a smile a smile time is this that can make My God, what time is this? In the church, the choir is singing. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. People are kneeling down to pray. In the sky, the angels listen, while the earth below just glistens. Oh Lord, oh Lord, what time is this? Christmas. This is a great day, December 25th, 2011, and it's a, a beautiful day that we call Christmas. This is Christmas Day, and whether it be historically the actual day of the birth of Christ or a chosen day uh, to remember that event, it matters not. Christ was born, and that is what matters. 
Blessed is Christ, and holy is his wonderful name. And though in history and mythology other lives have been expressed to have lived similar experiences to the Christ, it matters not. For the life that Jesus was to live and the experiences that Jesus was to have were written in the stars, were written in the word of God long before his birth. His patterns and experiences lived by other persons were nothing more than signs of the coming of the Lord who was the real and true Jesus Christ. Praise be to our Lord. I honor him. Such a precious person, such a holy name, that it is said to have died with criminals was such a terrible disgraceful thing that has no downgrading on him because that ev event by his resurrection act of rising again amidst the angels modified anything that could have been said against him as to that effect he is my lord my lord of host my king and i love him and i always will and i am so thankful on this 25th day of december 2011 for the birth of Jesus Christ and I am a total follower of Jesus Christ now we're going to be reading a good deal of of uh, scripture but first I want to share something with you out of the book of star rise from the holy manifest a revelation given to me by Gabriel the angel a long long time ago and it has to do with the mother of Jesus Christ and the birth of Jesus Christ and it goes like this the search for the lady who could wear the halo crown during the time of a star day generations ago in the time of the earth planet among the stars of the eighth universe dotted disk of the brilliance of matter moved in streams of motion within the body of space the swirl of life was strong and the force of energy prevalent throughout the system but in the course of time certain thought germs developed within the heavens among the celestials consequently many entities of the celestials began projecting turbulence within the system so it was the entities called the celestials strove one against another until there was war in the heavens in the pictures of signals one may reach into many reflections ago in the mirror of such reflections memories speak from the dawn a story of three spirits of god that came from the thrones these three are part of the seven spirits of god whose highest aura soul presence is always before god elohim i am although each of these spirits represent an order composed of many millions of angels that constantly descend and ascend the staircase of god's mind waves each order is called one spirit the three that came are the seraphim the judges known as the fiery essence the ophanim the creators known as the wheels and the cherubim the watchers known as the guardians don't confuse these watchers which were the good watchers with some watchers that are mentioned in bible works that were not the good watchers everything was progressing in the excellence of the plan and in the beauty of unity until lucifer a cherubim angel was assigned as a temporary overseer of the ophanim order it was then that lucifer decided to coach away the ophanim's loyalty for when the leaders of the ophanim went into creation and he knew that he would be in charge he consigned that that was a excellent time to do his thing the dark blur has built many provocations but when the first signs appear they then know that neither will the dark blur nor they daubed with this stigma brand continue for the voice of the first sign will say you have cast fire into god's sanctuary therefore your broad arrows shall fly no more and neither shall you be any more but unto the destinata the holy manifest will be the voice that speaks first and the last signs and they shall see through healed eyes so that all that appears gloom and doom to the followers of the dark blur will be seen by the destinata as inverted to glory and divine favor here o destinata i give you peace 
so that you need not eat your bread with quaking, so that you need not drink your water with trembling. The holy manifest will be your signet ring. Therefore, whatsoever road your spiritual guidance leads you to walk, fear not. You will not go empty, for I will supply you bread at every causeway. Hear my voice and believe, for it is the destiny. Now back to the lady and the search for the lady who could wear the hallowed crown. The lady whose head this hallowed crown shall fit is the one. When you see her, you will know. Many spiritual dark seasons passed into history. The angels of God searched as instructed to find among humankind a lady in whose heart was no darkness and whose spirit was whiter than the snow. After many searchings throughout the earth, there was not such a one found. Then came the cherubim to Gabriel and said, We cannot find such a lady. No, not anywhere upon the earth. Then replied Gabriel, By listening I have heard a great consonance. I perceive the destiny of the lady has been pre-chosen. There is no doubt why a conjunction among the atoms is risen. What is to be loosed for earth is to be loosed in heaven. I have found a great revelation in the Soundtron writ. Tanuel, the mother of Yavi, is destined to be the mother of Jesus. Therefore, you must search each new generation and age among humankind, for her time will only be known by discerning. In the course of time, after a great period of spirituality and dark generations, of spiritually dark generations, company upon company of angels descended to the realms of the planet Earth to search again for the lady and to bestow the priceless crown on her precious head. In a village by the sea, the angels heard the voice of a young virgin singing the songs of David the psalmist. She was of the descent of David, and her gifts were even as David's, to sing and to play the harp. So it was when the angels saw her pure countenance and the manner in which she gracefully conducted herself, they discerned she was the lady to wear the halo crown. After a period of time, the angels revealed themselves to Mary. And when Mary saw the angels, she sensed the awesome moment and knelt before them. Then Ali Amma, a christening angel, placed the halo crown upon Mary's head. As Mary felt the halo crown upon her head, flashes of transflowing from wonderful memories not remembered swept her mind into ecstasies. It was at this instant of subaddition she saw her ancient self when she was Tanuel gliding across the dance floor of the heavens toward her king's son, Yavi. Suddenly coming back to her present focus, Mary said, How shall I explain this crown to others? Aliyama, looking at her deeply, said, Rise, wonderful lady, stand upon your feet. Soon the crown will become invisible, and no one will be able to see it except those whose eyes are not withholden. Do not tell anyone of this crown. In times of trial, you will suddenly feel its presence upon you. From this day forward, dear daughter of ages, in every generation henceforth, you shall be visioned. Blessed are you, Mary, for you are a chosen branch of the root songed in the sound trounds of God. Immediately, the cherubim angels begin joining themselves together rejoicing with upward spirals of vibrations. So it was as these angels spanned worldwide with their vibrations. Wow. And this is the song of Mary. Once upon a star day, long ago, angels of heaven were told to go. Go and find a pure-hearted soul. When you see her, you will know. Her lattice is as pure as gold. Her words are white as snow. Her heart is a rhythm of love untold. When you see her, you will know. In a small little village by the sea, precious Mary knelt to pray. The angels began to sing, Hail, Mary, tidings we bring. If this crown of halo fits your head, you will be chosen, God has said. You'll wear the aura golden white. You'll give birth to Jesus Christ. Mary, mother of Jesus, Son of God, Queen of Heaven, Victorious One, your smile of love is in our souls. Your story will forever be told. Mary is the church the angels seek, a church that can dance and sing, a church to wear the crown's halo ring, a pure white church of the King. Mary, Mary, with the angels dance. 
Mary, Mary, let your feet take wings. Mary, Mary, with the angels sing. Mary, with your whole heart sing. Chorus, go and find a lady that can dance. Dance like the winds of the sky. Go and find a lady that can sing. Sing like a melody. Dieter Rita, Dieter Rita da. Dieter Rita, Dieter Rita da. Mary, Mary, Angelina dance. Mary, Angelina sing. Wow. Because the evil feared the good that was about to happen, in the epicenter of Tartaru, the crack into doom widened. Hellish cauldrons boiled fervently, spilling froth into the far-reaching corridors that the heavens and the earth might be filled with the velocities of the heavenly spirals. The hum of their accelerations touched the presence of Gabriel. Then said Gabriel, They have found her who shall be the mother of Christ. Immediately Gabriel phototranslated Un's presence before Mary, the virgin lady of pure countenance. And Gabriel said to Mary, Hail, blessed one, the power of the highest one is with you. And to you is given the halo crown of majestic orders. You shall conceive and bear from your womb a son who shall reign above the throne of David. He shall save the people from their sins. Therefore you shall call his name Savior. He shall be the Messiah Prince. Of his kingdom there shall never be an end. Then Mary said, How shall this be? For I have not a husband. You will know in that day, for the holy power shall come upon you, said Gabriel. So it was, the spirit of God's holy power came upon Mary, and her biological force was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, so that her cells began a dance of the genes, and reaching back into her inherent line of descent, latent factors ingrained within cellular properties began transmodulations. Thus, the male chromosomes of the first perpendicular lines of descent, Adam, became parallel within the sex cells of Mary. As Adamic chromosomes were fused with Mary's chromosomes, she was impregnated with child. So it was by divine providence and by deferred progeny, the second Adam came into physical life within the womb of Mary. Wow. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. We want to talk about this birth of Jesus Christ. And here's what I want to share with you. When the Bible talks about there are mysteries, there are laws that are too sacred for the state of mind that people are in to receive them, that it becomes unlawful even for those things to be shared, what it sets up is a line of demarcation. There is a balance, like a scale. And the scale doesn't have to be equaled out like the same weight on both sides. Because in the potentiation of God, like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, if there would just been ten people that were good, decent people, God would have spared the cities of, of a million people from their terrible experience of death. Well, I think that regardless of the huge population of the earth, that there is a balance now that enables this ratio to be opened. And the Holy Manifest is being poured out and beginning to reveal things that could not be revealed before. Let's go to the book of St. Matthew, and we're going to begin to read about Jesus, Mary, and some of these Christmas things. Chapter 1, verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now we've got different instances in the Bible in which angels photo transition their thoughts into the mind of a person in a form called a dream. And in that dream form, people receive messages that's just as if that angel was here and had told them person to person. And, and they're very clear, distinct messages. And so in the dream saying to Joseph, thou son of David, 
Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all of this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And that sort of sounds like something was really super fulfilled of the scripture. But when you really get into it and you really study it, there is a whole lot of deep-rooted things that you can't understand by just reading it here. First off, you look at it, and you got the angel saying, call his name Jesus. But in the scripture in Isaiah, it says, call his name Emmanuel. And the word Emmanuel well, means God is with us, whereas the word Jesus means Savior. Now, we could say that those words mean the same thing, but they don't quite. And then there's another, another thing. What exactly does it mean about getting pregnant by the Holy Ghost? Well, this scripture that it talks about, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. That is in Isaiah. So we need to go back to the book of Isaiah. So we just need to look that up because uh, there's something quite different about that. And, and very interesting, you know, I mean, we just absolutely need to know it. Go to Isaiah 7.14. Isaiah chapter 7.14. And let's just do a little bit of looking here because uh, there's, there's some stuff here. There's some... Interesting information we've really got to look at. Okay, in chapter 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, it doesn't stop there, though. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. And that sounds more like John than it does Jesus. When especially when you read some of the other scriptures where, you know, they, they call Jesus a wine bibber and a glutton and it talks about different food things, it seems different than what it's saying here. And we'll get into that. For behold the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, and the lamb that thou adhor that thou adhoreth shall be forsaken of both her kings. Now then, this scripture of the Lord himself shall give a sign, and he's going to conceive, and behold, a virgin shall conceive and, and going to bear a son, is connected to a whole bunch of stuff. And part of that stuff is about a time way, way before the Bethlehem birth of Jesus thing, because it incorporates these two kings, and the two kings are explained in chapter 8. And it's very, very, very important to have all of that information. In verse 4, it says, And before the child shall have knowledge, and we're in chapter 8, sorry, chapter 8, verse 4, Isaiah, Before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of the Samaria, shall be taken away before the kings of Assyria. Whoa. Now, there are two particular kings that it is talking about. And these two particular kings are the kings that it's referring to in verse 16 of chapter 7. And once we begin to see this revelation and we begin to understand that this thing about the virgin is tied into them. And in the verse 6 of chapter 8, it says, For as much as this people refuses the waters of Shiloh, and go softly, and rejoice in Rimson, and Rimaliah's son. Now those are the two kingdoms that the two kings is talking about. Therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth upon them the waters of the river strong and many, even the king of Syria. Now, how is that tied in to this virgin birth? Well, this is a really interesting, strange thing. Now some persons would say, well, when it meant virgin, uh, it just um, it meant young, young person. Well, uh, don't be so sure that that is what it means. I know there are are some uh, 
uh, translators that, that have that idea. But let's just look here at chapter 8, because this is really, really far out. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning Maha Shalahashai, or Shalahapash. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest, Zechariah the son of Jabir Yeshia. And I went into the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Mahashalahashbis. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria, shall be taken away before the kings of Assyria, or by the kings of Assyria. So this looks like almost, you know, this prophet Isaiah, he's a very aggressive person, and um, he's made this prophecy about this virgin, the Lord himself, and then a person might look at this and say, wow, he got to be fearful that this virgin prophecy was not going to come to pass. So he went out and he got two of the leaders that had very credible names, and he had them come in and witness that he was going to have a sexual encounter with a prophetess, a lady, and from out of that encounter, she was going to get pregnant and have this son that was going to fulfill this thing about those two kings, and then therefore, in some kind of a way, fulfill this prophecy about the virgin in the book of the seventh chapter of Isaiah. Now, for sure, someone out there will say, well, no, that's not quite how it happened. But here's the thing. What we have to understand is things are just an awful lot different than what people think. And when the Bible says that Jesus was after the similitude of Melchizedek, and that he was after the order of Melchizedek, then does that mean that the body that Jesus took, even though it was connected to the Abrahamic seed, and the Melchizedek order was not, that Jesus actually looked like Melchizedek, in the baby to the age 33 and a half years old age range, that he looked, because he was after the similitude, or were we just talking about the order of, of spirituality? Well, don't be too sure, because after all, there had to be something that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit did in this deferred progenity or deferred progeny to bring forth this birth, taking it all of the way back, the Lord himself taking it all the way back to Adam, who the Bible says in the book of, of Luke, in the genealogy, Adam, who was the son of God. And there are people that spiritually believe, and they would have certain amount of legitimate reason for this, that Christ and Melchizedek are sometimes like two persons and sometimes like one person. And they would have legitimate reason to, to see that. Now, this thing about the Holy Ghost and the child, believe me, even though the Holy Ghost triggered it, initiated it, it used physical properties within the body. Because most people within their own cellular aspect can go back in time all of the way to Adam. And if your body was capable of knowing how to do it, <clears throat> could bring forth latent histories, latent connections to ancestries. And that's exactly what happened in the case of, of Mary. And all oh, that story, it would take me a week of ministry to give you all the facts that's in the Bible. It's so rich. And it'd be so interesting to a lot of you. And eventually we will get through the whole thing. But, you know, I don't want to tie up the Christmas story too much with that part. But I want to say something else. A lot of the Christians have not given the credit to Mary that Mary deserves, and according to the Bible, Mary is supposed to have. The Catholics have, and I give them credit for it, whether you appreciate that or not. But out of that age of, of the woman uh, not being recognized, to where their names don't even come up to list them, in the Bible, even among the disciples, who, who it was proven that they had wives, but they don't even mention their names hardly because they just weren't recognized. But Jesus wasn't into that kind of thinking. And there's many things that can be said about that. In fact, 
it was many of the ladies that helped finance his ministry, and that's in the Bible. And Jesus understood a totally different, he was no respecter of persons. In Christ, there was neither Jew nor Greek, nor male nor female. And we've got to come into a different recognition of things, because if you don't, you're losing out. You're losing out on the revelation. Let's get over to the book of, um, of Matthew. I want to read a couple of interesting things. Okay, let's talk about the three wise men, or the, the wise men. doesn't really say three, but let's just talk about them, okay? Okay, but there probably was three. There might have been even more. And it says in chapter 2 of Matthew, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Someone will say, well, why do they need to ask that question? Well, maybe there's been a lot of cloudy days. And it's been so cloudy that they haven't been able to see the star. And when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And of course that's in the Old Testament, in the book of Micah. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Oh, Herod would not like that. The Romans would not have liked that either. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Now, if anybody thinks that's a star, you need to think again. You tell me how that a star up in the sky can move and you can follow it. You can follow it in, in direction. When a star is over a city and over a big area, it sort of is like in the center of the, the whole big, huge area. It doesn't move you down by miles or streets or blocks and then come and stand. A star don't stand over a, a house. You wouldn't be able to tell which house it was over because it's so far up and 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 uh, we know where the stars are. And if any star came down and got closer to Earth, there'd be a, a gravitational disruption of the Earth. So that could not have been a star as a star. It wouldn't have been a comet either. <laughs> it wouldn't have been any of those kind of cosmological things. But what it was, was a star ship. It was a zith. And this zith could do that. A, a zith could come down and could move, and move slow enough, or wait, and stall, and wait for the, the, the wise persons to catch up, and then it could go and hover over the house where they, they could look and say, oh, that's right over this house. And for you to try to say that it was a star, and we know by reading the Bible that a lot of times where it mentions star, that it turns out to be a person. A star fell from heaven, then it ends up being a person or an angel. So we know that star has many different meanings. There's proof of alien involvement for the very birth of Jesus Christ. Proof. Wow. Wow. Let's go on with it. And he sent them to Bethlehem, go and search for the child, they said. Verse 9, And when they had heard, heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood. <laughs> over where the young child was. Oh, my. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were coming to the house, into the house, not the manger, when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Now, 
I don't think I'm going to have time tonight, but we'll see. To give you the scriptures to show that this that there was a cave. And this cave is what Justin and Origen, who were two of the great early fathers of the church, they believed that Christ was born in a cave. So um, we've taught that before, and it's in some of the blogs. Sometimes a house is backed right up to the cave and, and, in, and incorporates the, the, the cave as part of the house. And, um, and they could have had even a place for animals to have got in there. But there's some beautiful scriptures, and, and I really want to get into all these potential scriptures in the Bible that talk about from everything about being born under the apple tree to being born, you know, uh, you know, under the apple tree, rather, and to being born on the, in the crags of the rocks and, and all these various things. There's some really, really neat scriptures. But I don't know if we'll have the time. But, wow, it sure is interesting. Whoa. And we know this is all connected with when Herod did not find Jesus and the wise men, they received a message from the angels. And the angels said, don't go back the same way you came. You got to get out of here because Herod is going to try. He'll kill you. So they went another way and they escaped. And then God spoke to Joseph and said, you've got to get Mary and Jesus out of here. I want you to go to Egypt and so he left by night, and he got out, and he was told, don't come back until you receive the word from the angel. Now, the angels are involved in all of this. Angels are telling people when to go, when to come, showing them where to go, how to go. You leave these angels out of the picture, and the story of Christ doesn't get to be unfolded. These angels, which are aliens, not of this world. They're from another planet. They're from another world. We've got to wake up, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to wake up. Wow. Wow. And this was connected when Herod couldn't get the wise men, couldn't find the baby. Then he, he sent out and he had children of a certain age in that whole area in Bethlehem. He had them all murdered and killed. And then that fulfilled a scripture in Jeremiah that talked about a terrible, sorrowful thing. Verse 18 of this second chapter of Matthew. In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted, for they are not. And that's only part of the scripture. I don't have the time right now, but if you write it down and you turn to Jeremiah 31.15 and you read the whole thing, it says, don't cry, don't mourn anymore, because you're going to be comforted. Your children are going to live again. They're going, to, they're going to come again. And they're going to come from the land of the enemy, which was Rome at the time. And they're going to come through that process and come back to the Jerusalem, to Israel. It's Bible. Regeneration. The Bible says that every person is going to get a time and a chance. They're guaranteed a time. There's a, they, 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 they're, they're not just going to be a little kid and be killed and that's the end of it. They're going to get their time. They have to be regenerated. They'll be regenerated. They will get their time. The Bible says that a good person falls seven times and rises again. But a bad person falls and doesn't rise. Figure that one out. Wow. It is so absolutely important. Now in the second chapter of Luke, in the 13th verse, said, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go even into Bethlehem and see what this thing is that is supposed to come to pass and is meant to be made known unto us. And they made haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the sayings that was told them concerning the child. There's a multitude of angels here that have appeared. A multitude. A vast number. It's not minor. This is a major thing, this birth of Jesus Christ. These angels understood how major that this was. How that this was the very beginning of an act that would provide for the redemption of the fallen angels. 
It was major. It was a rejoiceful thing. Well, the clefts of the rock. Deferred virginity. Song of Solomon's 2.14. The clefts of the rock. The birthplace of Jesus Christ. Now the main thing is that he was born. We don't have to get technical about the, the manger or the cave or the house. We just need to praise the Lord our God. To worship the Lord our God. To magnify the Lord our God. And there are many, many more things that we can talk about, and they are all interesting. But blessed be the name of God. Blessed be the name of God. I want to pray for the sick. On this Christmas Day, Heavenly Father, God Almighty, reach out your hand of love. Let the Holy Spirit just begin to go through this transmission. Let your energy just begin to, to flow out. And these people that are fighting for health, that have been depressed, that have been suppressed, these people that have been tricked and tested and tempted, oh God, reach down tonight. Give them strength. Give them strength that they will feel has come into their mind and into their body. Let your healing virtue begin to flow through every cell. Move throughout all of the body from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. Those who have been just chaffed and suppressed by the forces of darkness, we come against those forces right now. And to every hear, ear that will hear this message, we adjure that force and we say now leave the presence of these people whose ears have heard this message. Leave this instant or we will come back against you and we will bind you into space for a thousand generations. Believe it and heed it or accept it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, may the spirit of love go out and pour as a, a soft falling rain upon you. May those drops just kiss your cheeks as it flows down over your body and you begin to receive this healing and the love of God. We love you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. God bless you. There's only one Christmas There's only one Christmas There's only one Christmas Like this A little precious baby A heart that loves forever There's only one Christmas like this Tonight I'm dreaming of Christmas What a wonderful, wonderful day The dew on the fields was glistening the night the angels came down far away a star was leading three kings to a heavenly side the babe, precious Jesus, was swaying In the arms of his mother that night There's only one Christmas There's only one Christmas There's only one Christmas like this A little precious baby A heart 
that loves forever There's only one Christmas like this Shepherds on the hills were singing Songs of sweet lullabies Silent night, holy night, sweet Jesus. The night the angels came down. Yes, tonight I'm dreaming of Christmas. Ah, the night. Of our dear Savior's birth Precious night, precious memories forever What a wonderful, wonderful day There's only one Christmas one Christmas There's only one Christmas like this A little precious precious baby A heart that loves forever There's only one Christmas like this Little precious Precious baby With a heart that loves forever, there's only...